Hey, what's up peeps? Welcome back to my channel. So, I'm pretty happy because today I'm finally posting the DIY pergola I told you guys about a while ago. I actually did it last summer and I'm just now posting it, so please forgive me, but I can't wait to show you guys. So, this pergola was done in less than 4 days and for less than $240 for all of the material that I use. So it's really affordable. Shout out to my mom because she came up with this entire concept of this pergola. This was our first time ever doing something like this. And we ran into like a few bumps in the road with just trial and error, but it came out really, really nice. So I can't wait to show you guys. And yeah, it came out nice. So I do wanna mention that it's two ways to have this pergola. If you want to have shade in your pergola um, by adding a tarp, I'll post that video next. But in this video, I'm just strictly showing you guys how to make the pergola. And then, like I said, if you're interested in adding shade to it, that'll be in the next video. So don't forget to comment below. Let me know what you guys think, you know, about it and how did we do. Also, please like and subscribe. And yeah, let's get straight into the video. All right, so here is a before picture of my patio. It looks a complete mess now, but I did this patio makeover like two summers ago, and although it looks okay, it just doesn't have enough color and enough wow factor for me. So we went over to Menards, and here's a clip of all of the different type of center blocks they have. They have so many different textures and colors, and they also have these wood posts. So here is a picture when we were in the store. My mom had this good idea to put the wood posts inside of the center block to keep it in place. And that's kind of where the inspiration came from to make this pergola. So at the time that I bought my center blocks, they didn't have any double center blocks. So I had to get the single ones, but if you have to get single, you'll need 48 of these single blocks, or if you're lucky enough to find the double blocks, you'll only need 24. But make sure whatever blocks you get on the outside of the blocks that it has all of the same type of surface, so that way, you know, it doesn't look mix match, if that makes sense. So for my pergola, I got 48 of these single blocks in this concrete glue and preferably you would want the double blocks because gluing the single blocks to make them double, it just takes more time and glue. So if you can avoid getting the single ones, please do so. A few moments later. So now I have a total of 24 double blocks, but like I said, if you guys buy them double already, then you only have to buy 24 and not 48. I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, it's about to rain, so I'm gonna try to finish this up. So you guys saw that I already connected these two stones together. So what I'm gonna do first is put glue here try not to get it on the edge so it doesn't like seep out then I'm going to put the other one on top you're gonna try to line them up as much as possible all right so it's even on all four sides so now we're going to glue the top of this one I probably put the glue a little too close to this edge you don't want it close to this edge you want it close to that edge in the inside so before the glue is dry you can like adjust the blocks to make sure that they're flat on all sides all right so now that we have the three stacked on top of each other now I'm going to put three in front all right so the bottom piece you're gonna turn it over you're gonna put glue on the sides Then you're
you're going to lean it against here very even. Then next you're going to glue the top. And then glue the side of here. And then you're gonna put this on top. This is so now the back is glued and now the top is glued. And we're just gonna repeat that same step. So glue here. Then glue on the side. A few moments later. Alright, so it started raining. As you see, I have you guys under an umbrella, but I didn't want, you know, the rain to mess up the glue bond, so I put these plastic bags on top. But hopefully they glue well. It's supposed to only rain for an hour, so we'll see. So this is how the patio is looking so far. Two hours later. All right, so I have a total of four posts and they are four by four by eight. So it's eight feet tall. So what I'm gonna do is use this semi-transparent, um, what is it called? Gosh, I can't even think of it. Um, stain, that's what it's called. But it's by the color Clove Brown and I got this from Menards. I think it was maybe like $30. And then as you guys can see, I got this little bucket to make it a little bit easier for me. Put the stain in here. Um, and then I have my stain brush. All of this stuff came from Menards. So let's get started. As you guys can see, I did the first coat on these two. So I'm gonna let that dry. As you guys can see, my backyard is a complete mess. Got the dog pool going on and a TV. Then now I'm just doing the other two over here. So, so next I got four of these solar light posts and make sure you get the ones to fit your wood posts. I got mine from Walmart, but they also sell them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, and Menards. Alrighty, so I did this step off camera because the posts were pretty heavy, but I put the posts inside one of the center blocks. And what I'm doing now is just putting dirt inside of each pole because I want to, you know, kind of weigh it down even more. Although the center blocks are really heavy and it's not going anywhere, I just wanted to, you know, be extra secure. And if you want this to be more permanent, you can definitely glue the base of the center blocks to the floor but you know you don't have to do that if you want it to be removable so now it's time to add you know a pop of color and I just added some lemongrass in here because I heard that they repel mosquitoes I don't think that's true but you know we're gonna try it I also found these really cute dragon flowers I think that's the name of it but I thought these were so cute and it just gives it a pop of color it was actually my mom's idea to go ahead and add some greenery to the holes because of course you just don't want it to be bare and it's just so cute I can't wait until you guys see like the finished results and I'm just adding a little bit of red mulch to the top of it so you're not seeing the dirt and I feel like it's a great finished touch especially Especially because the red mulch kind of matches the stain of the wood from the post. All 
All right, so next up, you're going to need four coated cables, and I got mine from Home Depot. They were able to cut them to the length that I needed. Next, you're going to need four packs of these cable locks and one pack of screw hooks. So this part is totally optional. I thought it was a nice finish to add the post lights on top of the post. And what my mom here is doing is just measuring the inch underneath the light so that way we can screw in our hooks. So in this clip, I know it's dark, but we're trying to show you guys how to lock the cable. So you take one end inside the lock and then you bring the other end on the opposite side and then you lock it. Hopefully the next clip where it's daylight, you can see better. I know it's not a very clear presentation, but there's plenty of tutorials on how to do it. So next up, I bought 12 packs of these net sheer curtains from Ikea and they come two in a pack. And the purpose of these curtains are one, most importantly, is to keep the bugs out and two, they look amazing. It definitely gives me such a beachy resort vibe, so I love them. And just in case you were wondering what we were going to use the coated wires for, it's actually for the curtains to hang those up. And the reason why we wanted coated wire versus just, you know, a wire that's plain and out and exposed is so that the curtains aren't ruined so the coated wire definitely keeps it protected and it also makes it smooth to open and close it so I got these string lights from Home Depot and I hung them on the same hooks as the wire for the curtains all right, so I went to Joanne's fabric and I had got a yard of this fabric. And I love like the little mustard color. I love the color mustard, by the way, if you don't know. But yeah, I got a yard of this and I'm just gonna go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to use this fabric as my tie backs. I had these tie backs here, this little white string, but I think this will be so much cuter and it also matches like the pillows that I have out there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and show you guys next. All right, so this is take three. Right now we 50-50. We one and one for tying it, but yeah, so we're going to tie it just like this. I think the key is to keep it wide, then bring it in like Wait that. Wait a second, we're going to move it like that. A few moments later. You know what I'm gonna put in your background? What? The Jeopardy song. <laughs> no. Oh, the boom. How'd that look? Like a bow? Alright, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. What's the, you know what? The, the whole uh, point of tying a bow is that it ain't, you know, no two bows is alike. Kind of like snowflakes. In a separate video, I showed you guys how to do a super easy DIY paver walkway. And then also in a separate video, I'll be posting how to put a tarp on the top of this pergola if you were interested. But I hope you guys like how this came out and now I'll show you guys the finished results. Hello stranger, it's been a minute since we last kicked And by the way, just got in town Then I won't let Cumulus clouds All in the sky Ruin my vibe Usually I Don't do this Often But since recruiting Isn't an option Due to unusual Rain and Thunder Baby I wonder Baby I wonder Just say you will, will